welcome. How may I take your order this evening? One grande coffee? Sure. Coming right up. Hey there, friends. Welcome to a special edition of Scary Stories. Now, why is today's episode extra special, you might be wondering? Well, it's because of an important message I have for you after the last story. So make sure to stay around. Anyways, from some coffee shop creeps to some late nights, these stories are going to chill you to the bone. Let's get started. Let's begin with our first story, Almost Abducted at Night. Hey there, former Starbucks employee here. I'd like to share with all of you a creepy experience that has reminded me just how easily your life can change. One moment you're celebrating the weekend's arrival. Next thing you know, you're quite literally fighting for your life. But how can working at Starbucks be so dangerous? Let me start you off by taking you back to the year 2008. Back then, I was a young college student in her second semester of university, and life was pretty good. I had a part-time job, I had a significant other, and my grades were incredible. Anyways, my job at Starbucks was pretty simple. Make some drinks, serve customers, get paid, the normal. I remember it all started one late evening where I'd say it was around 10 p.m. I was working the drive through and I was helping out a gentleman who had ordered a grande frappuccino. Thank you, sir. Go ahead and pull up to the next window and I'll have your drink ready. About 20 seconds later, this older man, who I would describe as in his mid-50s, pulls up in a gray Dodge Grand Caravan and immediately... He says something along the likes of, Wow, hello there, beautiful. Nice to see such a friendly face. A bit sudden, but I thank him for the compliment and have him wait a minute as the drink is being prepared. That'll be three seventy-five, sir. He hands over the money and I complete the transaction. While doing this, he calls for my attention and then he hands over a napkin. Here you go, darling. It's my phone number. Feel free to call me whenever you like. It was a bit awkward, but I took it, then proceeded to throw it in the trash. I wish that could have been the end of the story, but it was going to get a whole lot worse a week later. So we fast forward. It's myself and another co-worker closing. The front doors are locked, and I'm busy mopping. That's when I happen to see a figure standing at the front. Thinking it's a customer, I walk over to tell them that we're closed. Turns out, It's the man who handed me the phone number just a week prior. It did spook me for a second, but I then give him our usual spiel. Sorry, sir, but we actually just closed ten minutes ago. You'll have to come back tomorrow. He stares without saying anything for about five seconds, and then he responds with, Why didn't you call me back? Immediately, I knew what he was speaking of. But I acted as if I had no idea what he was talking about. I'm sorry, sir, but I'm not too sure what you mean by that. Regardless, you'll have to come back in the morning. We're closed. Even after I told him we were closed and I had walked away, he continued to stand there staring. Super awkward. And my co-worker notices the creep too. But he finally leaves two minutes later as we watch him get in the same Dodge Grand Caravan. Eventually, it's time to leave the store, but without a car, I had no choice but to wait for my dad. There was no way I was walking 20 minutes in the dark. Now, if there was one nice thing, she did offer to wait with me since I was still paranoid from earlier. But after a few minutes of waiting, my dad calls me, saying he was about 8 minutes from the store. So, I reassured my friend I was going to be okay, and she leaves. Those next 5 minutes would be a living nightmare. As I sat there listening to some music on my iPod, I was unaware of the footsteps that were approaching. Dumb decision to listen to music at this time, but I was young, and I was naive. Anyways, in my peripheral vision, I saw a figure, and immediately, I thought it was Dad. When I look up, I'm surprised by what's in front of me. The creep who had given me the phone number and who was standing in front of our Starbucks, now had this look of satisfaction as he stands there, knife in hand. I sat there frozen, but my mind was screaming at me to move. I do, but by then, it's already too late. 
He has a tight grasp on my arm, and he begins moving me to the back of the building, presumably where he was parked. As this is happening, I'm kicking, screaming, pretty much doing the best I could to get someone's attention, or at least to try to get away. But you have to realize, this guy is easily over six foot four, 260 to 280 pounds, and this 19-year-old of 5 foot 1, 100 pound female. The guy was strong. After struggling, he points the knife closer. He says something along the lines of, Be quiet, or I'll rip that tongue out of you. That sent chills. Then, I remembered my pepper spray. With my other arm, I reach into my pocket to grab it. But he sees this, and he knocks it out of my hand. I was running out of options, and we were getting closer and closer to the back alleyway. Luckily, by some miracle, two security guards that patrol the bank next to Starbucks happen to overhear my yelling, and they see this attempted abduction. Now, I actually knew these security officers and was friends with them. One other thing I knew was that both had license to carry, and they waste no time raising their sidearms. This guy sees this, and luckily, instead of using me as some sort of shield, he books it, heading into the back alleyway. The two security officers give chase, but it's too late, as he gets away in this Dodge Grand Caravan. Naturally, I was beyond frightened, and I broke down in tears as the security guards comforted me. Police officers did show up 15 minutes later, and I gave them a description, as well as the build of the vehicle. A couple of weeks later... They have their man, and he's arrested. Turned out, he had a couple of restraining orders put against him, and this wasn't the first time he had a brush with the law. I learned that the guy had some serious issues. Luckily, they're able to put him behind bars with all the crimes he had committed finally catching up to him. But you can imagine that for a long time, I was scared, paranoid, and just down creeped out any time I was alone at night. Why? He chose to come after me. I don't know. But after this creepy event, my dad bought me my own car, and I never stayed outside the store ever again. Story number two, Marine to the Rescue. This was around December 2018, when I was attending night school. It was just a couple of weeks before the holidays, and I remember just getting out of my last class at around 10.45, and I was dreading the hour drive back home on the freeway. But what could I do to wake myself up? That's right, go grab a coffee. And that's what I ended up doing. So I had to a Starbucks that was about 5 minutes from campus. And when I walked in, there were a couple of other patrons sitting at some of the tables. One was reading the newspaper, the other was on their laptop. I didn't mind them too much and I got in line to order a coffee and some cookies. Once I paid, I sat around and waited for about three minutes, and finally, with coffee and snacks in hand, I began walking back to my car. But here's when things get creepy. Since it was pretty dark, it was hard to see anything from a distance, but for some reason, I saw my car rock back and forth every so slightly. I had to do a double take, but then I told myself I was just imagining things. Anyways, I opened the door, sat down, and placed my coffee in the cup holder. But before leaving, I got on my phone and took the time to respond to a friend who had texted me minutes prior. And here's when something happens. Suddenly, I feel the car move, and my attention is focused into the mirror above me. And what I saw sent chills down my spine. There is a homeless man in my back seat. What are you doing in my car? Get out! No way! Do you know how cold it is out there? Can't I just stay in here and warm up a bit? No, you may not. You need to leave before I call the police. How did you get in here to begin with? He explained he had been fiddling around with various cars, and he noticed that my car was unlocked, and that's when he made his way in. I guess that's what I got for being so forgetful. Maybe I was being overdramatic. Just imagine the situation. To make things worse, his breath indicated that he was clearly intoxicated. Look, pal, I'm not having this. It's not your car. Now get out. What he does next sends me running. The guy takes out a knife, and he was so close to slashing my face, 
I could feel the cold steel pressed against my cheek. I jump out with my keys, of course, and I begin dialing for help. Seeing this sends this dude into a frenzy as he steps outside and then says he was going to slash my eyes out of the socket. In my shock, I drop my cell phone mid-conversation with a dispatch lady and I book it, heading toward the Starbucks, and he follows suit. Somebody help! There's a man! He's got a knife and he's outside! The patrons and the employees had a face of, you must be kidding, until crazy dude runs in. He starts throwing napkin dispensers, trash cans, and chairs everywhere, going on about how we were all bad people. He then says he was going to slash each and every one of us up until we no longer lived. Whatever he meant by that. Seeing this scary stuff happening, the man who was sitting with the laptop gets up and he tells him he needs to leave. Just so you know, laptop man, bad name I know, looked like some sort of bouncer, but this didn't seem to intimidate the guy. After saying no, Mr. Homeless Creep rushes over to the laptop man and they now have a struggle. Laptop man ended up getting some pretty nasty slashes on his arm, but fighting through the pain, he was able to subdue this creep until about four officers showed up, sidearms at the ready, five minutes later. There was then another struggle, but after a taser, they are able to get him in handcuffs. Talk about a very scary situation. I leave about 30 minutes later, after giving my statement and then talking with Laptop Man, who was getting checked up on by some paramedics. I've been using the name Laptop Man, but he introduced himself as Alex and told me that he was in the Marines. I guess that would explain his actions. Anyways, I thanked him non-stop, but he told me he was just doing his part. So, to Alex, I know chances of you hearing this are very unlikely, but I don't know if I'll ever see you again. I just want to say thank you for putting yourself in front of everyone that night. If it wasn't for you and your bravery, things could have turned out so much worse. Story number three, Coffee Shop Robbery. It was summer of 2005. I was 19 years old. I had no money and I was looking for a job. I did try applying at Target and Costco and Walmart, but there were never any calls back. and It was pretty disappointing. Now, I was living at home with my parents and they did buy me everything I wanted, but I really wanted to have responsibilities and have the satisfaction of earning the money on my own, not having it granted. One day, I stepped into a coffee shop I frequented, and I was having a conversation with the owner. One thing led to another, and he offered me a position as a barista. I was beyond excited, but to be honest, I knew nothing about coffee. But that would change after a couple of weeks, and soon, I was on my way to my first paycheck. I got paid weekly. It was only about $200. Nothing crazy, but rewarding nonetheless. Things started off fun and exciting until a couple of months later, I would have a scary encounter. I was working the night shift with a fellow barista named Eric, and our little coffee shop was pretty empty. Well, I shouldn't say pretty empty. It was completely empty. It was 20 minutes before closing, and Eric tells me he was going to go into the back to do some cleaning. I tell him it's fine and I started to rearrange some of our displays. I'm doing this for about three minutes, and for whatever reason, I looked outside our window. There was somebody in a ski mask walking back and forth, almost as if he was checking for something. I thought it was pretty weird, but I thought it must have been some bored teenagers. We got a lot of college students in the area, and a lot of times, they'll goof around. But what happens a couple of minutes later was no laughing matter. A man in a ski mask armed with a revolver enters the store. I thought it was a joke, and I nervously laugh it off. This, however, didn't go well with the armed individual, as he points the thing at me and he demands I open the cash register. Suddenly, that smirk on my face changes to absolute panic, as I do as I'm told. I start to put what little money we have in our register, and while doing this, Eric steps out with a tray of cookies. This dude literally fires a shot toward him, just barely missing him by a few inches. I'm pretty sure he just got scared because he didn't fire another one after. I guess that's his reaction for seeing cookies. Anyways, 
He demanded Eric stay where he is and not try to run to a phone or activate an alarm. After 45 or so seconds of absolute uncertainty, the man runs out of the store, and once he's gone, Eric and I run into the back room where we lock ourselves in there and we call the police. Unfortunately, he got away that night, and after an investigation was launched, it came up empty-handed. It's easily been over 10 years, but I'll never forget the night that our coffee shop was robbed. Story number four, not your typical coffee shop love. Ah, love at first sight. What could possibly go wrong with finding the girl of your dreams? Just think about that. A fairy tale ending where you can live happily ever after. Sounds like a lot of barnacles to me. Yes, I said barnacles. Get over it. In attempting to be a terrible jokester here, I want to go over something creepy with a certain someone that never did leave me alone. Allow me to take you back to a time when I was younger. 2015. 20 years old. Your average college kid, where I spent a lot of time at a coffee shop. You might have heard of it. It's called Coffee Bean. Not as popular as Starbucks, mind you, but it did the trick. Anyway, seeing as I frequented that certain Coffee Bean, I became friends with the baristas and the commonplace customers. One afternoon, I was sitting down minding my own business when this girl wants to know if she can take a seat next to me. She seemed pretty nice, so I said, sure. For a quick description, here's how she looked like. Hipster glasses, brunette with blue eyes, I'd say around 5 foot 3, 105 pounds. Apparently, all the other seats were taken, and mine just so happened to pique her interest. At first, she just sat there, and eventually we started a conversation. What are you working on there? She wants to know. I turn my laptop around and show her the digital art I was working on. At the time, I was really into Japanese animation. I was working on some of my original characters. You should have seen her eyes. She was super excited. No way. I love that stuff. That's so cool. You make your own characters? One thing led to another, and we ended up exchanging phone numbers. You might be wondering, this doesn't sound scary. But wait, trust me. It's going to get scary. Anyways, we pretty much text each other non-stop for the next couple of days, and after a date, we ended up becoming boyfriend and girlfriend. We were pretty steady for a solid three months, and we still frequented the coffee shop. However, things started to change when she would make up random excuses. She would take days at a time to respond, and when I questioned her on this, she said she had gotten busy. She got busy all right because I learned she was seeing someone else. Only reason I found out was because she left her phone on the kitchen countertop next to me while she was in the restroom. I know I shouldn't have looked, but I was cooking and it was there. Apparently, she was talking to some guy named Damien. The conversations were, let's just say, not for something you would want your kids to see. When I confronted her, she told me it was just a joke. But she finally confessed, saying she had fallen out of love. She left, but this only lasted for about two weeks. You see, she started calling me again, saying how sorry she was and how she wanted me to accept her back. I sure didn't want any of that, and I told her she's better off finding some other person to trick. This didn't go well, as she started to send some pretty disturbing messages. Things like how I would be sorry and I would pay for her heartbreak. Excuse me? Yeah, as if it was my fault. One day, it would all become all too real. Fast forward a year, and I had a new girlfriend. She's actually my wife today. We were having dinner at Olive Garden, and who do you think was at the table besides us? Yup, ex-coffee girlfriend with another friend, at least who I was assuming was one. She lost it at the sight of us together, and she grabbed one of the steak knives and came lunging toward me. She managed to scratch me up pretty good, but thankfully with the help of one of the waiters, we were able to get her to calm down. That still didn't stop me from calling police, and it's now I finally decided to file a restraining order. Not because I couldn't handle her, but because I didn't want her coming near me, or my now wife. Anyways, it's been almost four years, and we now live in another state and are married with our first kid on the way. So that's the story 
of my not-so-typical coffee shop first love. Hope you enjoyed it. Story number five, Early Morning Crazies. To preface this creepy experience, I work at a small coffee shop that opens daily at four in the morning. That means I leave my house approximately one hour beforehand. This was something that took a while to get used to, but eventually it became part of my routine. Normally, I do drive to work, but on this one weekday, I ended up taking my bicycle since my car was in the shop getting work done. It's about a 30-minute bicycle ride through downtown Montreal that has me pass various buildings and a couple of parks. Nothing too crazy. As for the people roaming around at that hour, it's usually the homeless, but they always mind their own business. Anyways, fast forward to around 3.30 in the morning. It's here, I just arrived at my shop, and it's just me in the quiet dark of the night. I was parking my bicycle and just grabbing my belongings, when out from nowhere, I began to hear grumbling, sort of like someone talking to themselves. So I look around, and that's when I see it. Behind one of our dumpsters, I saw a figure stumbling back and forth. That was pretty strange. So I stood there staring at it for a solid ten seconds. Soon enough, the person steps into the illumination of one of the nearby lights. It's a homeless man, and he appears to have a bottle in hand. I tell myself it was most likely a late-night drinker, and I proceed to walk over to the front door to let myself in. Of course, me being clumsy, I struggled choosing the right key, as I already had five others. This clumsiness would allow enough time for the homeless man to become interested in my early morning struggle. Excuse me, miss. Would you happen to have the time? I look at my watch, and it's about 3.40 a.m., which I then relay back to him. Thank you. Also, could I go ahead and use your restroom? I'm sorry, but it's for paying customers only. Why can't you just make an exception? Please, I won't take too long. Now, I guess I should be honest. I'm the kind of person that's very shy, and a lot of times I do as I'm told as not to escalate things and make them worse. Even so, the guy was clearly out of it. And I knew that if I let him into the store, he could go after me. Maybe I was being overly paranoid, but I was this tiny 20-year-old female outside in the middle of the morning. Still, I thought maybe if I told him to wait a few minutes, I could lock myself inside as I wait for my co-worker Joey, who would be joining me soon. Sure thing. Just give me a few minutes. Wait for me out here. Nervously, I opened the door, but right as I'm about to lock it behind me, the homeless man reaches for that door handle, and he attempts to let himself in. I said, give me a minute. Please, back up. He then takes out a knife from his coat pocket, and those moments felt as if they moved in slow motion. What didn't move in slow motion, however, were my cat-like reflexes. Seeing the knife, I book it to the restroom as he begins to make his way inside the store. As for the last frightening image I'm able to witness... Before I'm in the safety of the restroom, I see him charging at me before I slam the door right on his face. He then began kicking and pounding at the door, telling me to let him inside, otherwise I would be a goner. I was so scared that even while on the line with the police, I struggled to give them any details of my location. Luckily, after a solid minute, they more or less are able to determine where I am, and they told me officers would be there shortly. Who knew shortly would be three minutes, because soon I'm able to hear officers shouting at someone to get down on the ground. Obviously, they were referring to the creep. After hearing what sounds like a struggle, the lady on the phone says it was safe to step out. I didn't want to, but one of the officers assures me I was safe. My brain, telling me not to step out of the safety of the restroom, does so anyways, and sure enough, they were right. An officer was standing right there to greet me. I... Pretty much fell into his arms, crying, thanking him profusely. Don't worry about it. We're just glad you're safe. Come on, follow me. We need you to identify the individual. We walk over to the police cruiser, and then he says, Is this the man you were referring to? He points to the homeless man who was in the back seat handcuffed. I tell him, Yeah, that's him. He came charging at me with a knife, and I got so scared. 
We have security cameras, if you wanted to check those. I show them to our security cameras, and after they review the footage, they are able to successfully charge him. Finally, as we all step out of the store together, my co-worker Joey is just arriving, and he has a face of absolute confusion. Anyways, after some explaining and talking with our manager, he is able to get someone to cover for me as I go home to rest from the frightening experience. It took about a week for me to get back to work, but even then, I was still paranoid. It's now been almost a year, and I've more or less moved on. Before we get to the last story, I just wanted to say thank you very much for watching. Just remember, if you'd like to see more, including sneak peeks and previews, then make sure to be following my Instagram, at the Creepy Fox Official. Also, make sure to check out my brand new merchandise. You can either check it out underneath the video player right now, or you can find it in the link in the description below. I'll go ahead and show you some previews of it on screen right now, but just know by checking it out, you're helping me out a lot. But with that said, let's get on to the last story, because it's a pretty good one. Story number 6. Kyle the Creep. This was in 2013, when I had transferred to a university in Northern California. I'm originally from Southern California. Now, the reason I'd moved was because the major I wanted to study wasn't offered where I was, but none of that is really important. So, it was halfway through the semester, and even though my parents were helping with finances, there were still some things I needed. For example, I needed money to go out with friends, and I needed money to buy new clothes. This meant I needed a job. Thankfully, one of my roommates had told me the coffee shop on campus was looking for a couple of new baristas. I thought, why not? It'd be pretty cool. So she put in a good word for me. About a week later, I had an interview, and they accepted me within 20 minutes of talking. Seriously, it was awesome. Now, as for my schedule, I worked Friday, Saturday, Sunday in the mornings, which allowed my evenings to be dedicated to studying or going out with friends. Life at that coffee shop was good. One evening, the shop had been fairly quiet, and I was on my last 15-minute break. As I sat there at a table, having myself a coffee and a sandwich, a guy around my age takes a seat at my table. I thought it was weird for him not to say anything, but I smiled back and said he was welcome to join me. I would be heading out in a few minutes anyways. He introduces himself as Kyle, and he wants to know if I worked here. Guess the uniform wasn't obvious. I promise I'm not this sarcastic. Anywho, I told him yes, and he says, Nice. Got any recommendations? I'm in town for the week, and this was the first coffee shop I saw. The conversation was pretty normal, and I helped him out. One thing after the other, we ended up exchanging our Instagrams. Big mistake. Fast forward to later that evening. We started messaging each other for about an hour, and Kyle was going on about how beautiful I was, and how he would love to go on a date before he left. I was going to say yes, but unfortunately I already had plans to visit my family. It was my grandparents' 50th wedding anniversary, and the plan was set in motion for over seven months. This was something I explained to him, but he wasn't having it. Why do you have to play so hard to get? Come on, just give me a chance. Sorry, dude, I can't. Maybe some other time? Of course you would say that. If you didn't like me, then why didn't you say so to begin with? Seriously, you're all the same. I'll save you the details, but he spends the next five minutes sending paragraph after paragraph of angry responses. Again, I reminded him of my plans, going further to say we had just met and I just wanted to be friends, something I'd made very clear. This didn't help, and he started saying stuff like I would be sorry for breaking his heart. That was enough for me to block him. Sort of harsh, but I wasn't going to deal with some possible creep. Fast forward a few days, and I was on campus late in the evening, studying at the library. While there, I got a text message from an unknown number. I can see you, my precious. It's almost time for our date. The message genuinely creeped me out, and I remember looking everywhere, but all the students looked innocent. Besides, I didn't recognize a single one of them. 
How would they have my phone number? Reluctantly, I text the number back. Who is this? And how do you have my phone number? Moments later, I get a response. You didn't forget about me already, did you? I'll give you a hint. Coffee. I got the chills. Was Kyle really stalking me using an unknown phone number? But how? How did he manage to get my number to begin with? I was so scared that I packed my books into my backpack, and I pretty much ran out of there. Once I was halfway to my dorm, I started to relax. Oh, come on. I bet this is just one of my roommate's dumb jokes. Ugh, I swear. I'm going to get back to them. But just as I'm laughing internally, I go silent when I see a familiar person approach me from behind some lockers. Is that my beautiful Erica? It was Kyle, and he has the creepiest smile. I stood there for a few seconds as I saw him flick open a switchblade. Come on, honey. Surely you don't want to play hard to get, do you? He starts laughing, and I book it with him chasing me. Just imagine 11 at night running away on a university campus. One thing was for sure. I couldn't run to my dorm, because if I did, he would find out where I was staying, and that would make it worse. Where to go? Well, guess what other building was near me? The coffee shop. The one on campus. Since it was open till midnight, I sprint my way through the front lobby, only to turn around and see Kyle was gone. And just like that, Kyle had disappeared. He no longer messaged me, and he never again showed up in my life. My friends tell me that he was most likely just messing with me, but something tells me that Switchblade wasn't a toy, and his intentions weren't innocent. What do you think? So, you might have heard me say at the beginning of the video that I had a special message for you. Well, you're right, I do. As you're listening to this recording, I'm currently away on vacation, and today is September 28th. See, I talked to you all on the September 24th episode of Scary Stories, the one with the pizza delivery experiences. I talked to you all about the upload schedule, and all of you chose this. Upload one video a week during the month of October, so I could save the second videos for those weeks for when I'm gone. If I didn't, it would have been two uploads a week all of October, then nothing for two weeks in November, and I didn't want to leave you all cold turkey. Speaking of turkey, while you're listening to this, we should be a couple of weeks away from Thanksgiving, so I'll make sure to have an episode for that day. Um, but let's see. I rarely do these scheduled videos more than a month away. Uh, hey, creepy fox from the future, it's your past self. Ooh, spooky. Sorry, I'm having fun. But yes, yeah, since this episode is being recorded weeks in advance, there won't be a comments with creepy today, uh, mainly because, well... I don't have the ability to go into the future and see what you're all going to write. So instead, uh, let me go ahead and give you some updates. Bear in mind, I'm going to try to do my best to predict what's going to come up, mainly because, well, the plans can change in the next few weeks. Let's see. Uh, since this upload won't go up until November, um, I should be back home November 12th. Then I'll try to do a new episode for, for that Saturday, which, let me see, um... It should be November 16th, but remember, I'm recording this in the past, so, I mean, I don't know. Uh, besides, I don't even know what topic I'm going to do. Um, but if I do get time to make a video, I'll try to use some of the footage I film while I'm in Mexico. Uh, in fact, if you didn't join me last year around this time, it was like November 2018, uh, I recommend you go back to the videos from, well, November 2018. I featured a lot of the cool footage I got in Mexico. Speaking of footage and all that stuff, uh, if you've never taken the time to go follow me on Instagram, now would be the time to do so. That way, you can see all the cool footage and the pictures I'm taking. It should be available in my Instagram story, which I'm going to have updated daily. I did that last year, and it seemed like all of you enjoyed it. Once again, it's at the Creepy Fox Official. Anyways, once I'm back on my normal recording schedule, I'm looking at doing a Thanksgiving episode. And then after, we should be in the month of December. I'll most likely do something Christmas slash winter related then. Uh, but that's enough rambling for one video. Let's get on to question time. And today's question is this. What's your favorite coffee? Or better yet, from where? Let me know. So friends, this has been the Creepy Fox. 
and you've been listening to my Scary Stories podcast. Talk to you all next time. Take care, and have an amazing day.